or more. There's a lot of small matter and I grand like this. So they say labor party, labor party. Don't give Peter Obi, the former governor of Anabra State, and the current governor of Abia State, Peter Obi and Alex Oti. They say labor party. Don't give them seventy-two hours, seventy-two hours, seventy-two hours to cancel the meeting. Make we listen to this video. Make we hear their reaction. These journalists you guys are seeing in this video, their reaction about this update, and make we understand everything. Make we watch the video. We will understand everything, and I'll come back to react to this video. Labour Party has given its 2023 presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, and Abia State Governor Alex Oti, a 72-hour ultimatum to withdraw their notice of National Executive Council meeting. The party contends that neither Obi nor Oti has the authority to convene such a meeting on his behalf. Earlier, Oti announced a stakeholder meeting scheduled for September 4 at the government house in Umuahia, the Abia State capital. In response, the Labour Party threw a statement from its publicity secretary, Dr. Abayomi Arabambi, denounced the move as unconstitutional. The statement reads, The attention of the leadership of Labour Party National Working Committee under the National Chairman, Barrister Julius Abure and National Secretary, Alhaji Farouk Umar Ibrahim, has been drawn to a purported unconstitutional illegal clandestine Labour Party extended stakeholders National Executive Council meeting of Labour Party, convened and signed by Mr. Peter Obi as National Chairman and Governor Alex Oti as National Secretary. The Labour Party further called on the Inspector General of Police to investigate Obi and Oti for their alleged unconstitutional actions. The party's statement cited Section 484 of the Criminal Code Act which defines impersonation as a felony punishable by imprisonment. Labour Party is therefore calling on the Inspector General of Police to launch a massive investigation against the duo of Mr. Peter Obi and Governor Alex Oti for their unconstitutional involvement in the impersonation of the Office of Labour Party National Chairman and National Secretary. Despite their long political standings and education, the statement continued. The party emphasized that OB and Otis' action are a violation of its constitution, which designates specific rules and responsibilities to its national chairman and national secretary. The constitution outlines that only the national chairman, Barrister Julius Abure, and the national secretary, Al-Haji Farouk Omar Ibrahim, have the authority to issue notices for neck meetings and oversee party operations. Labour Party hereby, as a matter of urgency, urges the duo of Mr. Peter Obi and Governor Alex Oti to always get themselves acquainted with the constitution of our party before taking decisions that it's not only ultra vi ultra virus. That is not only ultra virus, irresponsible, unconstitutional, but absolutely unpardonable and a national disgrace, the statement added. The Labour Party has demanded that OB and Oti cancel the unauthorized meeting within 72 hours. Failure to comply will result in the party filing a formal petition with the Inspector General of Police and the Director General of the Department of State Services for Fraud, impersonation and actions liable to disturb public peace. Damzi, what is your take on this story? Yes, I, I want to react by saying if actually Mr. Pitobi <coughs> and Alex Oti signed in place of the national chairman and secretary, who they are not in the party, that amounts to impersonation. And a criminal charge can be preferred against them. Mm. Okay, so it will be it will be proper for Mr. Peter Obi and uh, Governor Alex Oti, if actually this story is true. Okay, let, because me, let, me, let me give you a background. Now, um, Alex Soti, in the face of the crisis ongoing in the Labour Party, paid a visit to Julius Abube. And um, in course of their conversation, told him that 
according to the story, he would want to convene uh, a neck meeting and also told him that it was time to con that the, the tenure of both national, state and world um, executives have expired and there was need for a neck meeting and um, subsequent elections. And in reaction to this, Julius Aburi, the Labour Party National Chairman, you know, called the press conference. He was really angry, called the press conference and um, slammed Peter, um, Alex Oti for that and also told Alex Oti that he doesn't have the right to convene a neck meeting. Now, subsequently, Alex Oti now um, changed it from neck meeting to stakeholders meeting. Now, this stakeholders meeting comprises of um, the past presidential candidate, P2B, the, vi the past vice presidential candidate, Obida um, Dati, and um, some of the uh, and, uh, elected members, probably at the state house, national at the case may be, elected um, politicians in different offices, and also some of the Guba candidates in different states. It just spread across all the major stakeholders, right? And um, it, when I went through that letter, it wasn't, uh, even the words were not mentioned in that letter, right? So he now called a stakeholder meeting, not a neck meeting. However, in reaction, Julius Aburi, and in that uh, letter as well, Julius Aburi and his executives were part of the invitation. persons that were invited, seven of them were part of the persons that were invited. NLC, mm -hmm. uh, three persons from NLC who are already in the National Executive Council in the NEC were invited. Three person representatives from TUC who were also in the NEC were also invited. So they made sure to invite representative of each um, major stakeholder in the party. So that's the background and that is what led to, after the the release of that uh, stakeholder meeting by Alex Oti, Peter B on his ex handle applauded the move of Alex Oti and said that it was time for issue fences to be mended and for truth to be spoken to. You know, everybody will speak truth to themselves. So the then the reason according to Peter B was for uh, to to reconcile differences and mend fences and say the truth to themselves. So that, that was just basically okay, it. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for clarifying that. But from what was read out or mm -hmm. what we read earlier before now. The reaction yeah, of Yeah, the reaction Abure. of Abure. Abure stated emphatically that Alex Soti and signed Tito B signed in place chairman of and secretary. chairman and secretary. Mm -hmm. But from the clarification now, it is, it is known that this is not a neck meeting. Mm -hmm. That this is a meeting of like minds, people who believe that it is time to reconcile the differences in the party and have this unity intact ahead of 2027. No, oh, sorry, to, sorry to interject. Now, the statement, in the statement, even Julius Aburi um, acknowledged the fact that it was a stakeholder meeting. Let me, let me quote them according to this. He said, the attention of the leadership of Labour Party National Working Committee under the National Chairman Barrister Julius Aburi and National Secretary Aladi Farouk Umar Ibrahim has been drawn to a purported unconstitutional, illegal, clandestine Labour Party extended, extended stakeholders slash National Executive Council meeting. So you see, they added to the stakeholders okay. and then married it to the neck meeting. Okay, fine. Uh, Julius Abure and his team should attend that meeting. Okay, because if it were to be a national executive meeting, mm -hmm. Peter Obi and Alex Soti wouldn't have the powers to sign or even in call the first the place call the meeting. But this is a stakeholders meeting where they want to look at their themselves and tell themselves truth and how well they have misbehaved. Because in, in resolving issues, dramatic persons need to sit on a table, tell themselves the truth, mention which is which, and come up with a solution. So, Peter B, I know, is a fine gentleman with character 
And uh, I, I was surprised when I read that news that he signed in place of a national chairman. I became very worried because signing where you ought not to. For example, if I raise a letter in your behalf and I sign mm. in your behalf, I have committed a crime. I have committed a crime and nobody, the, the law is so trite that nobody is above the law. Peter B being a very fine gentleman, we all applaud in the country. I, I'm, I'm very certain that he knows very well that it will be an impersonation to sign on behalf of a national chairman. So if it is just a mere stakeholders' coup <coughs> NEC meeting, a, we are the not one a to neck meeting, not a, a net, no, not a neck meeting, a stakeholders' meeting. I, th I don't find anything wrong in right. such gathering. Right. It's a gathering that will bring about solution in the <coughs> party. So uh, Abure shouldn't feel scared. I know Abure have been faced with lots of you know accusations, challenges in the party. Possibly this move now have threatened him. <laughs> so he shouldn't feel threatened. He should attend that meeting and and right. solve these problems it's for the unity of the party. It's like my senior knew where I was to start from. Okay. And that, and, and that is the fact that uh, this said uh, notice or press release uh -huh. from Abure and his uh, secretary was born out of fear. Okay. Of fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Yes, fear of the unknown. I, I <clears throat> the truth is, Abure, this holding tight syndrome is what also is killing Abure. Labour has been a mass from one political crisis. We are not done with, we are done with our papa. We are not having NLC. Only that has nothing to do with political party participation, coming into political activities. Sad because they said they were the first trustees. Mm. Members of the elected executive of NLC are members of the trustees of Labour Party. And so they own the right to the extent that they set up a, co a committee. A transition committee. Committee rejecting the Abure's faction. Mm -hmm. Now, now be said, let's get it right. Did you also remember the Okafo that uh, said there was a, a judgment backing him? Backing up. him, up, ma'am. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not go into <laughs> the so many troubled waters of Labour Party. Right. Let's, let's concentrate on what is before us now. Now, it is not true that P2B as a member of NEC, OT as a member of NEC, Mm -hmm. Cannot convene a neck meeting. It is not true. The law is very. The person that have the right to do so is the national chairman communicating to the secretary of the party. Mm -hmm. But where they fail to do so okay. within a given number of time, mm -hmm. members of that neck can request. Request uh, is it requisition? Yes, is it? meeting. They can do so by calling for signatories of fellow neck members. To assign that the uh, neck meeting is due, but the person saddled with the responsibilities have refused to, to call for the meeting. When we have at least one third of the members of NEC signing, then the meeting is properly called. But if out of fear, OT has refused, or somehow. Um, Julius Abri. No, OT. Okay. Somehow changed the name from neck meeting to stakeholders meeting. Who told Abure? that members of a political party cannot gather. Cannot, the, con, cannot, cannot have a stakeholders meeting. Cannot call a stakeholders meeting. It's like calling of my friends, want to meet of my friends in the um, Labour Party, come, let's meet and discuss on how to move our political party forward. You cannot then change the name to call it NEC. The only fear I said is that the persons that the letter invited are members of NEC. Mm -hmm. exactly. Most of them. So and it members give, of NEC. And members of NEC. So it gives the impression that it's it a is a stakeholder meeting, meeting but having the, the result well, of a NEC, NEC decision. decision. Mm. So that is where the fear of Abure is coming from. These persons, these persons can meet as friends, but the composition is that of NEC composition. And so if a decision is taken at that meeting and the motion is moved, removing Abure, it will be NEC, but remember, NEC in NEC meeting, there are some constitutional requirements you have to meet also, mm -hmm. giving a notice to INEC about a particular number of days to do so. Mm -hmm. So if you don't meet all those requirements and INEC is not present, that cannot be said. In the a NEC meet meeting? Yes. Thank you for watching that video. So guys, before you leave, look at the top here. You will see where they wrote subscribe. 
just subscribe to this great platform and also put on Sean Bell so that whenever we upload any video in this great platform, you will be the first to see it. And don't forget to share this video to all social media platforms on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, and also on YouTube so that everyone out there will see this video. So guys, see you guys some other time.